right, well, welcome back. So with this part, we're going to go over the oil, uh, priming your motor, and basically setting up everything and installing your distributor and getting it ready to start up. And if you've appreciated the series, a subscribe would be awesome and, you know, thumbs up. And if you see anything that you think I missed or needed to add, please add it to the comments below. And I will add that to a future video or even maybe edit this one. Um, so with that, let's get started. Before you can break the motor in, it needs to obviously have oil. Go ahead and fill the oil filter with about halfway full, maybe a little bit more until it's about the top, and then put it on uh, the uh, timing cover. Then, at that, after that point, my break-in process involves using Lucas TV Zinc, Zinc Plus. Uh, it's designed for hot rods, classic cars, race engines. And it's, it's fully loaded with a bunch of ZDPP and, or ZDDP and zinc. And it does a really good job. Um, and it's available in most places. There'll be a link down at the bottom for you. Then for the oil, I tend to use VR1 racing oil from Vaveline. Again, it's a high zinc oil. Our motors are an older style of motor and they need a little bit more zinc. I'm not saying that you need to go over crazy worried about it, uh, but again, Having a high zinc content oil is just extra insurance, is all it is. And this is available in most your Napa's, Pep Boys, O'Reilly's, Advanced Auto Farms. So the motor uses 3.9 quarts, but about four when you figure in the fact that you got empty areas in the motor here. So what I do is I use three quarts of the VR1, one pint of the zinc plus, and then I add the, I fill the top it off with a half of this not the full quart but a half of a quart so a pint of the lucas stabilizer i do that because it it, it helps ensure that the oil's sticky and there's a lot of because you want everything to be covered really well and you want the there's going to be a lot of dry areas when this motor starts up no matter how much you worked on putting in all the uh, lube and everything else there's still going to be dry areas for at least a moment or two during the break-in cycle so what, that, that's the system I use. Feel free to just use your regular oil. I would not recommend synthetic. I would not recommend um, anything lower than 2050. Uh, straight 30 weights tends to be the best, straight 40 weight. 1040 will work, but again, unless you're, you're, you're driving this car in really sub-zero temperatures, 2050 is gonna be fine. I mean, most people are driving our cars nowadays in the, in the spring and summer. So you're not really going to be worried so much about that. So with that done, the next part is to prime the oil pump. And let me show you how that's done. One thing we have to do before we put the distributor in is, you know, number one, just make sure you got your gasket to here. Gluing the gasket to one side and let it set for a while is good. Now, you'll see in the middle down there, you, that's the slot, that's the bottom of your, or I should say the top of your oil pump gear. What we're going to do now with that is we are going to get it ready to go. Now first, before you do that, get your long screwdriver and, and slide it in there and make sure it spins freely. Now, you might have remembered I mentioned something about using anaerobic sealer and not a gasket. Well, those dimensions are that tight. Don't freak if this if your gears don't do not move and you use the anaerobic sealer trick that I showed. Well, then that guess what that means that it's just too tight. And you're just gonna go ahead and put the put the gasket on, like I had to do here. Uh, it's no damage is done or anything of that nature. Just kind of take the cover off, clean off the anaerobic sealer, and then just get the uh, the, the really really thin gasket. Like I pointed out earlier on the earlier build video, these gaskets could be really really thick. And you can see right here how thin I am using. And now I spin freely. So inside the timing cover, you'll see the very end. You're gonna to wanna to put something in that slot to spin it fast, which would be, in my case, a DeWalt drill and a modified large screwdriver. A smaller, cheaper, long screwdriver like this will work. It doesn't have to be but about a foot-ish or so. And, and You spin it up, you know, here it goes. You hear it speaking, 
That's the oil and the air, you see the air starts to bubble up here. And here, and you know you'll have oil pressure. And when you got the oil there, it'll take a few minutes. I've already pre-primed this one, so with yours, it'll probably take a minute or two. Um, you may find that depending on your drill, it may not be fast enough. You may have to go to a full-size drill to get the oil pressure. But you're not looking to really fill this up. You just want to make sure that you've got oil pressure. Now you have oil coming up here. And uh, I'm going to show you here on the oil gauge that I had here, you can see I made it to two and a half bars with the drill, which is not great, but the drill is not the motor and it's not going to be spinning near as fast or as, with as much power as the motor will be spinning. The two and a half bars is respectable. I mean, that's, that's about what you would see at idle when it's warm. So uh, once you got that and you know you're good, then you can put back your valve cover and then we'll insert the distributor. All right, so now that we're completely assembled, valves are adjusted, we have everything ready to go, we still need to put the distributor in. And to do that, we need to be at TDC number one. So we already checked the back mark here, right? But that back mark, is always TDC four and one, as we've already pointed out before. So what you have to do is you're gonna come and bring it up and around to your TDC mark. Now, put your thumb over the, uh, over your hole here and you'll crank it. If you feel pressure, and you hear it right there, then you know you're at TDC number one because you're, you're, you're having compression. You're on your compression stroke. So, right there, pop. So you know you're at TDC number one, and now you just align it up. And it's that, that simple, so straightforward. And uh, with your distributor, you're gonna see a mark right there on your distributor. What you're going to do is you're going to line it that way. You're going to notice that this is about sitting up there at 12 to 6. And you're going to look down there. And then when you see, when you look down there, you're going to see that slot. And when you see that slot, you're going to go, oh, okay, that slot's not where I need it to be. I need that slot to be right there. Probably a little bit, pointing at roughly about 11 o'clock will be good. This doesn't, this doesn't have to be rocket science. Now, it's going to be easier if you're doing this and you don't have a, um, you don't have a fuel pump in. And because I'm, I'm doing an EFI, I'm not going to put the fuel pump in, so I don't have to worry about that. And then you just kind of, see this, it's not going in, so you have to pull that out. the field thing and close and there and then it'll slide in so now it's slid in now you're going to rotate your distributor until you're pointing at this your, your center all dot centered up on that mark and now you are at tdc number one your distributor is ready to go put your clamp down this is not the distributor i'm going to use obviously but i just figured it was easier to show you with this one than it is to show you with a 2.2 distributor. So that's it. Got the distributor in. You'll have the distributor in. And uh, then it's time to put spark plugs and all the other stuff together.